In today's video, we're going to start by announcing our winner of a Cowboy Couture shirt, discuss briefly about how to find and push the limit of your horse to optimize progress, and look at an excerpt from the most recent upload on the Comfort Zone training video series, an in-depth look into lead changes. Also, stay tuned, because further into the video, I will give you instructions on how to participate in the latest giveaway. Let's do it! up everybody and thank you for tuning in. We're gonna kick off this video as promised with picking a random winner from the contest of the last video. If you haven't seen the video go and watch it. Pretty interesting but too late to participate in this contest but don't worry there will be plenty more coming. The contest in the last video was uh, just needed to comment on uh, on this particular video and I was gonna pick a winner from anyone who commented just because I want to have some interaction on the channel and I want to get to meet everybody and so uh, I really appreciate every, everybody drop, dropping me a line and, uh, and so I went ahead and put your name in the list here uh, on the commentpicker.com website where you can just randomly pick a winner so uh, we're gonna start by making sure that our list is complete yes it is not that many names on there, but again, those videos are fairly new, and so the following the follower base is not very very broad yet. So the chances of winning in the next contest are fairly high. So uh, so I appreciate everyone who participate, and hopefully uh, there will be a little bit more competitions in the videos to come. So anyway, so here it is. Pick a random winner. The list is ready. So let's see who will be the. Uh, the lucky winner of actually yeah for those of you who don't know the winner will be winning a cowboy couture shirt so they make great shirts for women or men uh, if you haven't seen the last video I was wearing one so uh, I will put the link up here you can go or the link in the description where you can go and, and watch the video and you can see the shirt I'm talking about there will also be a link down in the description to uh, lead you straight to their website so that you can see what they have in stock and you can pick your own. Anyway, so let's go ahead and pick the winner of a brand new Cowboy Couture shirt. And one, two, three, go. Kimberly Tillman, awesome, congratulations. All right, well, I know you, Kimberly, so it will be easy to put you in touch with the right people and get you taken care of. And congratulations, thanks to everyone else for participating. So. All right, on to today's topic. I was browsing Facebook the other night and I came across a video uh, posted by Seacoach. And for, the view, for those of you who don't know who Seacoach is, Seacoach USA is a Bluetooth device that instructors and coaches can wear and, uh, and, and, and communicate directly with a microphone and an earpiece to their, uh, to their rider. So it's just something that's, uh, I know there's been, people have been using phones and such things, but this thing is made for that. It's very, very effective. And and it's very easy to use and so it's been it's been it's been great so anyways if you've never seen anything about C coach go ahead and look it up it's a it's a great product but anyways um, I was just I'm always curious because the video started and this uh, this person was waiting it was a live video so this person was waiting on on the trainer to come online and uh, and take some Q and A's from some people that are there. I don't even know which discipline this trainer was from uh, and it took about at least a minute for this trainer to come online and I was just kind of waiting and this host there was just kind of patiently waiting as well with a pleasant smile on her face and I normally would have closed and moved on but something told me just keep watching anyhow so when she did come on the first question she's got was how you know how do you know uh, you know you, your horse's limit in a way so how uh, how do you know if you're doing too much or not enough and you know and and how do you know if you're being fair to your horse or not and and it's a great question so I was curious to see her answer and her answer was really awesome and it got me thinking got me thinking to my program to my beliefs you know the comfort zone why do I call this the comfort zone well I call it the comfort zone because you know when the horse is just well connected with you and it's just really with you it just feels really comfortable but at the same time there's this 
misconception about the comfort zone, which is, oh, uh, some people see the comfort zone as being on your couch, you know, watching TV, eating Cheetos, you know, and I don't think that the comfort zone is that. It is not that for me. The, the, the way I see the comfort zone is, is where you take professional athletes or professional race car drivers like Michael Schumacher or, you know, name them, any, anybody of, of that level or the top in, 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 our, in, in any, you know, horse industry also, the top riders, top bull riders, you know, when, when these guys are, are on, you know, are, are on their, you know, their best horse or on the biggest buck and bull or in their fastest cars and they're at the race and they're going, you know, you know, they're doing their thing to the maximum level of difficulty, this is when they are in their comfort zone, you know, and they've made this their comfort zone in a way. So, so the comfort zone is not only somewhere that you're comfortable, it's just making the uncomfortable, you know, uh, your comfort zone. And so this is why I thought it connected well to, to, you know, how do you find your horse's limit when you're training and how do you know if you're being fair and how do you push that limit? you know, without being unfair to your horse. And so the answer, her answer and, and the way that, that I also see it and I, that I think is a great way to put it is, well, if you're always going to be conservative and or afraid to venture and to, to or afraid to do something, then you're never going to really, you know, find that limit. You're never going to really reach that limit. So, so therefore, you're never going to really push that limit and that comfort zone of yours is going to probably remain quite small, you know, quite conservative. But if you are not afraid to go a little bit over the limit, get uncomfortable in order to, I believe you need to go a little bit over the limit. It needs to get a little bit uncomfortable. You need to get into some little bit of trouble in order to know where that line is, where that limit is. And then you throttle back a little bit and you know exactly where you need to work on. And you put your horse in that situation where you're taking him out of his comfort zone but you don't go too far out you just do it in order to find that limit and then you work on you know using you know depending on your discipline and whatever you do uh, but I have various drills and exercises that I've done with my horses ever since that I started them and that I've put the foundation on. So I'm going to use all of those tools at that my disposals. If not, I'm going to go create one. I'm going to create a working tool for my horse for this particular situation that made it a little bit, they made my horse uncomfortable. And I need to make this our comfort zone. I need to get into this situation again, whether it's running down fourth gear or fifth gear and sliding stop, um, you know, or whatever the situation. And, uh, and so you don't, you know, I think it's important to not, you know, to not just do something uh, that is that is that the horse finds difficult and that's sort of pl problematic and just do it and do it and do it until it gets good. I think that it's risky and I think it's uh, not very encouraging or motivating for the horse. So I think that it's important to f to to have that feel to know when it is you've reached that limit or crossed that limit and right away throttle back and use the tools at your disposal to you know to give the horse the proper instructions and training that he needs at the time in order for that limit to increase so again i thought this video was great i'll put the link to this video in the description so you guys can can watch it and if you figure out who this instructor is uh, or this trainer is and which discipline then put it in the comments below because I'm super intrigued and I thought that it was again a great answer to that question so this is why I wanted to uh, to answer it because again I thought that it really fit well with my concept and you know and also why I call my program the comfort zone so second on the list uh, we spent all day yesterday, almost all day yesterday, uh, recording. So we recorded a four, a short four video series of about 20 minutes on side passing, which again, I was just intended, I just intended to do maybe a, a five minute segment on side passing. Didn't think that I had that much to say about it. And to be honest, I had to cut myself short because I could have kept talking about it. So, which was interesting because it's such a basic thing. But again, uh, you know, after this, this explanation, I, I found that, you know, my, you know, the horse that I thought would be the best and the most responsive to, to side passing to really demonstrate what it is I'm talking about wasn't as, as easy as I anticipated. And that made me think that, you know, a lot of the horses in the barn uh, should be moving off my leg a lot easier. So uh, next week, I know what I will be working on, that's for sure. 
and uh, anyway so and then uh, but this was just a short intro for the you know the bigger part of what we recorded and we recorded I think it's almost an hour segment on lead changes because lead change is also a very you know basic maneuver every horse has to do it in pretty much every discipline and uh, uh, and and it is something so simple to do when a horse is naturally leaded. So when you have horses from the start that can just change direction and just you know they don't even know what it is to fall out a lead or or, or not change, and uh, and then this just makes your life so much easier because then you don't have to worry about that. But occasionally you have the the you know the type of suck back horse or a little bit more thick skin horse or uh, you know or lazy or whatever. Uh, those are usually the typical type or you know four beaters, bad movers. You have some horses that will be harder to change leads, and those will you know will be a challenge. And you want to be able to be ready when you tackle the lead changes, and you also want to 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 you know to to create as much positiveness around the lead change as you can, knowing that it may not be their forte. So uh, so this is why that something so basic and simple and in some horses can take a week to train while in others can take over a year. And I think this is why that this segment ended up being a multi-video series and, uh, and multiple topics. And again, I only discussed one or two exercises about it. So let's take a look at uh, a sh short excerpt from this video series and uh, we'll be back here in just a few. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate at the lope in the counter canter how I prepare and set up my horse for a lead change and what it is that I'm looking for to make it as easy as possible for them to change leads. Okay, so I am on the right lead right now. Okay, so I'm gonna prioritize my right diagonal. Okay, so my right hand, okay, this hand here, and my left leg are gonna be my priority. So when I put more pressure to say, come on, push, and I, and I drive my horse and increase the drive through his right diagonal, then my priority and my, the, the pressure is gonna come mainly from the left leg and the right hand, okay? When I feel that my horse is getting away from my left leg, really pushing his hind end under himself and sticking his rib cage in and being straight in the body while remaining soft to my right hand on his right shoulder, then I know I have a horse that's really pushing in his right diagonal. In some cases, I'm gonna bring his head a little to the left in order to help him increase the range of motion in his diagonal. But then once I have that there, once he gives me that shoulder here very good and is pushing all his energy for his right diagonal, I'm gonna go back to, uh, to, to putting his head back to the right here and making him look where he's going, okay? Second, I want that when I push him through his diagonal, that I feel that he's really driving from behind and increasing his range of motion and really re-pushing good at his diagonal. I want that when I put my hands down and that I relax my legs, I want that he keeps pushing. I don't want him to slow down. I don't want him to get undone or the shoulders to go down or the rib cage to fall back in. I want that I am able to push, 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 push. When he gives, I release and I want that he stays. If he doesn't, I'll push again. Push, push. Now I'm increasing the drive, pushing him in my hands, pushing him in his right diagonal. Good. There, there he kept it together pretty good. There. Now I feel like I'm loping a nice first speed. I'm not in second, this is first. And he's pretty, he's not anticipating it too much. He knows it's coming, but he's not, he's not really changing his mind or anticipating it too much. He's waiting for the signal. So I would like for him to just kind of be a little bit more numb about it. A little bit more, okay, we're gonna be doing this all day. I like that he's thinking about it, but I don't want him to anticipate it too much. For all he knows, we're gonna be doing this another 50 circle. So there's nothing that I'm doing that should be indicating that we're about to change. So when I feel that he's not thinking about it, this is when I'm gonna ask. Again, I'm sitting a little bit more on my left butt cheek. Okay, sitting on my left pocket. My left leg is further back and my inside leg is pumping forward and you know, encouraging them to have that forward motion. I'm using my calf with a little spur pressure 
And if I feel that he needs a little help, I'm just gonna roll my spur slightly on his belly until I feel he gets away from my leg and that I can put my heels back down without him stopping or losing motion. I think that now he's getting a little tired, but he's not thinking to change lead, so he's gonna be ready to do it. After the lead change, I like to wait at least two or three strides or more and not do anything so that, so that, that it's very quiet, it's calm after the lead change so that there's not going to be any reason for him to brace his hands up. And then I'm going to come with my leg and increase my left diagonal. The same diagonal I just did a lead change towards too in order to make sure that the next time I change lead that direction. Number one, he's relaxed after the lead change. And number two, he's not falling down on the shoulders or he's not lazy after the lead change. That he stays up and keeps pushing. At least, at least a full circle. And then I'm gonna reward and let him rest, okay? So this is a very basic exercise, but this is something that I want to be able to do as effortlessly and as easily as possible until, uh, until I'm able to, to, to go in first or second speed in the counter canter and, and push with my leg and I get a good response. But more importantly, when I release and I, re and I lower my heels back down, that my horse keeps that drive, okay? So this is, this is going to be the, you know, one, the most fundamental thing in developing a lead change, whether you're doing it in diagonals, in straight lines, or in a circle. So we'll visit in other videos the other situations that you can put your horse into, depending on, you know, on what type of horse that you have in order to develop the lead change. But in my case, this is going to be probably my favorite or my starting point and my favorite exercise for my horses. Welcome back. I hope that you've enjoyed this short excerpt. Again, if you are not subscribed to the video uh, to the video series uh, platform, the Comfort Zone, uh, you can just go and try it out for free for seven days. So seven days is quite enough time to browse through all the content. If see if that's something in, if there's something in the, in this for you, we continue to add content just like this every week. Uh, I missed a week last week because we had to go to Vegas, which turned out to be a pretty fun road trip uh, since I wanted to drive myself there and brought the family along. So we uh, loaded up in the truck and no, six horses and headed to, uh, to Las Vegas. And from here, uh, north of uh, Texas, from Dallas, it's a very beautiful drive, kind of following Route 66 along the way. So it's just beautiful landscapes, almost like almost the whole way, you're just like, oh, I cannot stop looking out the window. And uh, and every stop, every truck stop that we stopped had some very, very cool uh, sort of like mini museums where you could, you know, look at you know, old classics and all kind of stuff like that. Anyways, it was super interesting. I wish that I had I had more time to take more photos and, uh, and videos of that. But I uh, unfortunately, you know, the horses, it's a almost a 20 hour drives with, uh, you know, with with having to stop and water them and feed them and and uh, and so and fueling. And so I decided to make my stops as short and sweet as I could, but I sure wish that I could have flown my drone out there or uh, pulled out the camera and just uh, and videoed some of the things that I've seen on the drive. But anyways, needless to say, that was a fun trip. It was a good show, fairly successful. A couple of the horses that I brought did very well. Ended up fifth in the level two of the Open Futurity, which was satisfying because this horse has been one of my high hopes, but that's been a little bit difficult over the summer. And uh, now the uh, an RHA Futurity is fast approaching so but I think that this was a good confidence builder and I think that we're uh, I think we're ready to go to Oklahoma now or at least uh, another month or so and we should be where we need to be uh, as promised there is uh, something else that I want to give away and I figured what not better than a C coach device a Bluetooth device to uh, to um, to raffle here or not raffle but to to give away and 
again, in, in you know, for the benefit of, of uh, growing this channel, reaching more and more people and just, uh, I just want this to grow because I'm having so much fun doing this. I'm getting awesome positive feedback. So I just want this thing to grow and for it to grow, the algorithm of YouTube need to have people, you know, interact with your channel. So subscribe, like the video, comment. Uh, that really helps me grow and it helps me a lot. So I appreciate you doing that. And also you'll be notified of every new video that I post and in pretty much each video that I will be posting I will have some sort of contest giveaway because I have such a great group of sponsors that manufacture or make great products that are essential to my success and to my business and so I you know I, I wish that I could you know have more to give away every video but I'm gonna for now stick to you know to one thing and uh, and I do happen to have a C coach device because I've done some uh, some business with them in the past where I've helped them out we were at the 2017 or, or anyways the last worst world equestrian games uh, I was there and they asked me to uh, no, actually the coach of team Brazil for dressage uh, had some issues with her device she knew that I knew them and so she asked me for some help so I got her a new device anyways just me helping out earned me uh, a brand new device and so uh, uh, so I'm happy to uh, to put it out there for you guys so to win this please just comment down in the in the comments what is your area of interest in the equine industry what do you do do you train horses or you know what is your interest in you watching my video are you interested in the training videos what is your discipline just give me a little bit something about you so that i can get to know my audience better and uh, i think that'll help me deliver better content in the future and uh Anyways, and so this is all I'm asking. Uh, if you'll just comment down below, uh, and you know your area of interest in the equine industry or your area of involvement, uh, so that I can get to know you. And other than that. Uh, yeah, go check out the online subscription deal because I think by now we have a lot of very, very cool content and I have some really good ideas for the next weeks to come. So um, anyway, so this is it. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you stuck, uh, if you stuck to the video until now, then I really appreciate that because it was a lot of rambling and a long video. But thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.